A good morning, one and all. Before we get in to the subject matter of the day, which of course is Jacob Steinberg's article about David Sullivan, West Ham board, whatever you want to say, losing faith in David Moyes and his job resting precariously on the edge, which we're going to discuss with Joe in just a second. Uh, I just want to thank everybody who turned up yesterday for the Hammers Chat Patrons Golf Day. We had a great day. Um, I, I am proudly sporting the Losers Trophy, which is the Marco Bugas Trophy for last place. Uh, I just want to thank Steve, thank um, Dom, thank Rob, um, thank Gatesy for turning up. I also thank uh, uh, the golf club at Villa Ricky, which it actually turns out the golf pro there is not only a West Ham fan, but he is also a Hammers Chat patron. Didn't know that, did you, Gio? And he really looked after us and, you know, and, and gave us chocolate and 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 refreshments and 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 some spare balls which you needed because you kept on hitting them into um into lakes and and the rough and everything but it was a great great day that's the first ever patron hammers chat golf day and it was excellent anyway um something that's not quite so excellent geo is uh because i was away playing golf yesterday you alerted me to a story that had appeared in the guardian mate yeah it came out last night and i think this is what gives it if this was written by any old journalist, I'd probably shrug it off. But the fact that it's written by Jacob Steinberg adds a lot of kudos to it. And we know whose ear he's got at West Ham. And that's what worries me a lot. It, it worries me a great deal. So, so the article itself suggests that if we win, it's impossible to sack David Moyes. But should we lose, he might get sacked. He might not get sacked. We don't really know yet. And I just think it's wild. I think the whole thing's crazy. First of all, the timing. Why... Sullivan must have said something to Steinberg in order for this article to come out. So I think that is just bonkers. Why, why Sullivan wouldn't really bat him down the hatches? But then again, when you've got Antonio running his mouth on a podcast, you know, it's, it's obviously a thing at the club at the minute. Anyone can say what they want. I, I think the timing's crazy, but also just the whole... They're so indecisive. Sullivan's so indecisive. And I think... He, I don't... It's our first trophy in 43 years, potentially. I don't yeah. think the future of a manager should, at West Ham United should hinge on whether you win a trophy or not. I think there should be other things you should be judged on first and foremost, rather than winning trophies. When you're Man City today, when you're Man United, you can judge those managers on silverware. I'm not sure West Ham, Aston Villa, Brighton, Everton, take your pick of the other Premier League clubs. I'm not sure they can be judging their managers on silverware. If you get it, fantastic. It's a an amazing achievement, but if you don't win it, I don't think a manager should get sacked off the back of it. But it's just the fact that we are uncertain over Moyes' future. It's just baffling, Gonzo. Either if, if you if you think like this, if Sullivan thinks like this, clearly you've decided that you don't really want him at the club for longer than you need yeah. to. Just get rid of him. Like this, I, I, this is this annoyed me while we were outside the relegation zone. It was sort of either back him and shut up or sack him. We're doing it now. We survived relegation. We're waiting to play a final. It couldn't be in a, we couldn't be in a better situation right now. But still, this uncertainty lingers, and these messages of we might sack him, we might not come out from. We believe the board, and I just think it's bonkers. Well, I, I also, you know, where's the self-editing on this? And I, I don't mean. Jacob in his article, although I am surprised that he's gone with it. I mean, in terms of where is it from Sullivan? And think you talk about the feel good factor. We've all seen the the guys um, in the theme park on the on the rides, having a great time singing on the golf course, having, having a, a brilliant time. We know it's important. You you can just see you'd have to have no understanding of people at all not to notice that David Moyes looks happier. Uh, everyone looks happier. Everyone's in a good vibe. There's a really good feel good factor about it. So uh, where's where's the self editing where where Sullivan thinks I'm not going to leak this information out there now. I, I, I'll leave this because it's just poorly timed. That, that, this can only disrupt. And I, and I do want to say this. There is a massive difference between running an article or doing a video where you say I'd rather David Moyes is not here next season. I'd rather. And Postacoglu, I'd rather Brendan Rodgers. I think you can say that, and that's my opinion, because ultimately you have no power. It doesn't matter if I don't want David Moyes next season. I'm just a bloke on on doing a YouTube West Ham YouTube video. It doesn't matter. I don't. I have no say in the proceedings at all. That is very very different between reading something which says, "Well, I know for a fact from the owner or, or known sources, as it is, that his job is under threat." 
Well, that is power. That That is basically, this is coming from the very, very top source. So whilst I don't think we can undermine David Moyes, I think news that your job is under threat if you don't win and it's come from the top does undermine David Moyes. I think it also undermines the team as well. I, I, even, regardless of whether the team think they've, he's got the backing of the club long term, it's really important, I think, the team, with all this feel-good factor going on at the moment, that the team feel that he's at least got the backing of the board for the next week. Do you know what I mean? And 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 I think that that went um that didn't go badly. Um I've not followed up totally on, on all the Antonio stuff, Gio, but um I mean did you have anything more to say about articles that were saying to say about Antonio as well? Um, it, it basically Moyes got asked yesterday in his press conference about Antonio's podcast and his comments and Moyes to be fair I think he gave a really good answer. He just said that he's not got a problem with the Janlica and he said that he's a fantastic player or whatever. And then when he said, as for Mickey's comments, he's entitled to his opinion, but he doesn't want to say anything about it or something. I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, but Moyes basically praised Skamaka and said he didn't want to comment on Antonio's opinion, but he's got one. Um, so he, he played it down. I thought Moyes handled it really well, actually. Well, yeah, I mean, I, whilst I wasn't um, overly offended uh, by Mikel Antonio's comments, it, and I, I did the video about it, it wasn't so much what I thought about them. My my point very much was, well, what was Skamaka and David Moyes think about them? And when we did the, the interview with with uh, with Dixie, he very much said the same thing. It was his reaction was, well, how will Moyes deal with this? Um, should players speak out or be allowed to? Yes, of, of course. Was it poorly timed? Again, yes. How's that gonna How's that gonna look? to the manager will not great and I think him saying nothing pretty much then sort of says it all but so all these other rumours came out about Antonio Antonio's not happy with David Moyes right you know everyone would have heard it in the last couple of days and I thought a bit of a bloody cheek actually um, I can understand Ben Rama being annoyed with David Moyes at times I can understand Four nails. I can understand it's a Diop being annoyed with David Moyes, Flynn Downs being annoyed with David Moyes. We can all go through a list of players who we can understand might think that David Moyes has done them a disservice. Maybe Suchek changing his role from an, a, a goal scoring midfielder into an auxiliary centre back. We can all make a case for numerous players who might be a little bit peed off with David Moyes. Antonio. Well, I, I, I would argue that he's one of the beneficiaries of David Moyes here. And I think, hold on a second there, mate. You know, you might not be happy with it. You know, you 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 really shouldn't be in a position where you're overly being annoyed about his tactics because you thrived on him. Because actually, when David Moyes rocked up, we were talking about you. Pellegrini did not want to start him. He was the sub. We were saying, OK, I think his role is as super sub. He he took him, David Moyes took him, turned him into a number nine, turned him into, into the main man. He almost had a pretty much a free run of being the striker at West Ham for 18 months. He shouldn't be, he should be grateful to David Moyes. As I say, I, I would concede lots of other players wouldn't be. But come on, you know, um, I, I just thought, do you know what, mate? It's I, poorly timed and... I, why, why, why do it? Why not just say to the podcast, guys, I, guys I, I'll do your podcast. Can we do it? We do it in two weeks. Is that all right? Just do that. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I, I just think I don't actually have that much of an issue with what Antonio said. And I quite like honest players these days. I think football's gone so far the other way, which is these media trained, almost like robots you get. And I understand why they do it. And, and if anything, the Antonio thing proves why they do it because of the backlash, etc. That's why players like Declan Rice look at what Antonio's done and think, that's why I don't do stuff. That's why sure. I, when I do stuff, it's with Sky Sports, which is very polished. There's no rawness to it yeah. whatsoever. The club have got editorial control over what gets put out by Sky Sports, where it's going on. Um, I, I don't know enough about the Filthy Fellas podcast. I, I, I don't know if it's like a full, their full-time job or if it's just a hobby. I'm not, I don't know. But I would assume, the well, I, I'd imagine the club, and even to some extent, Antonio has no control over what gets put out at the end of it whatsoever um and that's where that's my biggest frustration so but yeah but because of what antonio said i quite like the the rawness and the honesty i just think the timing was really wrong and that's why i find myself quite liking 
when Connor Cody spoke, uh, when Lampard was at Everton and under pressure, and when he spoke spoke and tried to defend the fans against their protest against the the board, I thought, good on you. There's somebody that's thought about it kind of thing and he's he's given the right answers and stuff. That's why when I see Jack Grealish gaping around at Man City, I love it. I like seeing Jack Grealish pissed having a laugh and stuff. I like yes, seeing for sure. when, when Man City players won the title and they were all pissed and they were singing Johnny Johnny Store. I like stuff like that. The the players on the water park park, I like that. I like to see personality. I like to see character. And that's what you got with Antonio. It's just the timing of it's all wrong. But also I said this to you like the other day off air. I'll say it now. The, the media department is is confused me on this one. The previous head of media at West Ham would never have allowed that in a million years. There is no way Antonio would have been able to do the podcast he's been doing under the previous head of media. Uh, two before that, when we were in the final season up to part, that head of media. He would never have allowed it either. It was a bit dictatorish, but he, them two were in control of what came out of that club and they were very, very strict about it. And obviously, as people have produced content, it was frustrating and it was a bit like, I don't really get it. Well, I'm starting to get it now because when stuff like that comes out, I think, right, okay, now I can see why they're yeah. control freaks with what comes out and stuff like that and what the player is saying when they say it. I just think the timing from Antonio is all wrong. I agree with the majority of what he said. I understand where he's coming yeah. from. It's just the timing. Yeah. Um, and in the last week, we've had this article from Jacob Steinberg. We've had non-stop deck and rice talks. Now, and, and a lot of the talk is around that his dad's meeting up with people, yeah. etc. Et and then we've got Antonio in a pot. We're, we're preparing for the final, and there's all this, yeah. like, circus stuff going on. I'm aware we feed into it. Me and you are guilty because yeah. we send you videos about it, but we, we're not making it up. Other no, no. people have done it and it's getting discussed on social media anyway. We're just putting out... Well, we, we, get, we get a message saying, <laughs> what do you think about the Steinberg article? Yeah. Is, is, yeah. is what's happened today. It's everywhere, yeah. Yeah, it's doing, it does the rounds anyway. We're just, I suppose, promoting it to some extent, but we're discussing it and... You know, that's what, like you said. I always, As I always say, Gons, I'm just a gobby Scotsman on a webcam. Yeah, I, I'm not. No, you're just a gobby small Englishman. Absolutely. There you go. And 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 a loser one at that. As a, the Hammers chat official loser. There you go. Steve, thank ever thank you ever so much for organising that uh, that amazing day uh, once again, mate. Uh, Geo, thank you much for joining me. Let us know in the comments below what you think of well all of this sort of stuff coming out. And just finally, Joe, we got some Julian Dix um, merch to flog, right? Yeah, they've, they've arrived. Uh, it's, it's here that the Julian B Dix books have arrived, and there's loads of them, and they're clogging up my house, actually. Um, I bought quite a lot. We've sold a decent amount, but there's plenty for sale. I'm trying to find the page. They're all signed. They're all hand-signed by Julian Dix as well. So if you fancy a book, um, head to hammerstratstore.com. Um, link's in the description. We've also got signed prints and signed shirts. We'll be doing the pre-orders for another week or something, and then we'll stop the pre-orders, and then that'll be what we're getting. We're basically, whatever gets pre-ordered is getting signed by Julian Dix, prints and shirts. Books we've already got, but the prints and shirts, whatever gets ordered, gets signed, and there'll be maybe one or two additional items that will stay in the store. But once it's gone, it's gone. And We're having one private signing session with Julian Dix, and that's it. So if you want a shirt, a print, a book, get onto the store and if you're a patron go to patreon you get your discount and you know addicts save 30 percent. so it's, it's a lot of money it's a lot of money you're saving yes 45 pounds off a shirt if you're um a hammers chat patron addict a uh, link for that it's in the description below the shop is hammers chat store dot com uh patreon is patreon.com forward slash hammers chat thank you for joining us